Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we need to be taking a little bit of a look at some release dates. Now, it's a little bit weird today, right? Because we've got a list of products, and we've got a list of release dates, and that's about it. The thing is, these actually tell us quite a lot. Now, these have been confirmed by a distributor. They are real. They are good, and these are a thing. And we're going to focus on the February and May releases, because in February, we have listed some products for Sword and Shield 4.5. Now, this is the mini set, the one I told you about the other day, the one I showed you the total card mock-up, the one that's on the screen at the moment, and we talked a bit about what that set might entail. The thing is... That's all that's listed in February. Because you see, the next proper Sword and Shield set, Sword and Shield 5, the Urshifu set, so to speak, they're coming in May. We have a list of booster packs, mini portfolios, free pack blisters, and elite trainer boxes for Sword and Shield 5 in May. And that's weird! Because we know that Vivid Voltage is coming in November. That is a thing. Vivid Voltage is coming in November. That is just the way it is. We know that's happening. That's been confirmed. That is Sword and Shield 4. So Sword and Shield 5 should be coming in February. But it's not. That is going to give us a six-month gap between main sets and the last time that we had a six month gap between main sets was when we had neo genesis in december 2000 and neo discovery in june 2001 that was the last and that to be fair was only a five and a half month gap that was the last time we had a six month gap we've had a few four month gaps here and there but this is a gigantic gap between sets. Now, there is, of course, a very sensible counter-argument to be made here. Well, hang on a second, we'll see. We are getting that special set in February, and that's fair. But how much of an impact has Champion's Path made on the metagame? A little bit. Uh, I'm a fan of Waylord, personally. I've seen some people saying nice stuff about Dreadnought. Alchemy has some potential. But it's not made a gigantic impact. How much of an impact did Hidden Fates make? Almost none. Because it was largely a reprint set. How much of an impact did Generations make? Uh, we had Jolteon X. It was a pretty good card. But these mini sets are generally not the same as main sets. And I know it sounds like I'm picking hairs. But the fact of the matter is, main sets are made up of cards which are designed to be competitive and move the meta forward. And mini sets are often made up of reprints and shiny cards and fancy things. And to be blunt, they're made for different reasons. And this is the first time in 20 years we are going to have a gap. And I know we're getting the mini set. But I'm sorry I'm not bu well, I am buying it in a literal sense. I'm going to buy the set because it looks amazing even though we don't know very much about it at all. I'm, I'm a sucker, right? I'm definitely going to buy it. I love the Pokemon TCG, as you probably know by now. But if we look at other mini sets, they don't move the main sets. Like, at all. Hidden Fates came out in August 2019. Unified Minds came out in August 2019. So that, that, that didn't move anything. Generations came out in February 2016. Breakpoint came out in February 2016. These mini extra sets we get don't push the main sets. They just don't. For some reason, this is. Now, there are a million different reasons why this could end up being. Partly, it's probably due to the fact that they've had to slow down because of COVID, because the chances are that production has actually been impacted. But it is also going to create some weird gaps between us and Japan. It means that there is actually going to be a four-month gap between Japan's Sword and Shield 5 and our Sword and Shield 5. To put it into context, Astonishing Volt Tackle, which was very much a thing over in Japan, that was their equivalent of Vivid Voltage, that actually came out in September. 
So that means that we had a two-month gap. At the moment, we're kind of on a two-month gap between main sets, although we often get a mini set chucked in as well, which was a kind of a month or two older. But we're now going to a four-month gap. There's going to be a bigger gap between sets. And again, this is a fairly big deal. This is strange to me. And the only explanation I can give you essentially is that for whatever reason... Sword and Shield 5 isn't ready in February. And they've got to push it back three months. And even though we don't usually move the main sets for the mini sets, they've decided to this time to create a bit of breathing room. Yes, I know it's a 25th anniversary set. And I know it's a special set. But Generations was a 20th anniversary set. And it was a special set. And it did not push Breakpoint off of the release schedule. This is slightly strange. Now, one gigantic question I've been asked by a lot of people, and I've seen a lot of discussion about, what about Shiny Star V? What about this set that was revealed in Japan this last weekend? I have done a video about it. I'll pop a link in the description. What about that? What is happening in regards to that set? And how is that going to end up impacting? Is it going to be in February? Or is it going to be towards the end of the year like Champion's Path was this year? The answer is we don't know, and anyone saying they do know is purely speculating, but pretending it's more than speculating. My speculation, I'm not saying it will be in the February set, but I think there is an excellent chance it's in the February set. And I know that Hidden Fates, they made us wait till the special set at the end of the year. But the thing is, what else are they going to do? Like, Champion's Path is kind of a fun little set for collectors, but it's clearly an extra set. But the thing is, Champion's Path is coming out between Darkness Ablaze and Vivid Voltage. So, if you're a serious competitive player that just wants to try and have cards that push the metagame forward, Champion's Path has a few cards, and it's not that exciting for competitive players, unless you love Weirdle like I do. But it doesn't really matter because we've just had Dance of Blaze and we're just about to get Vivid Voltage. But if we get Vivid Voltage in November, there is a six-month gap before we get our next main set. And in that time, all we get is a little 25th anniversary set. That is going to... That's going to get to some people. And I know that shiny reprinted Vs are not going to appease a competitive player base. But they are going to make the set as a whole bigger and better. If you don't have anything to say to the main player base, hey, look, here's what we've got, you can at least go, look, we're going to have to wait a little bit longer for that, but look at the shiny, shiny. Pure speculation on my part. I could absolutely be wrong about this. We do not have the information. But as far as I'm concerned, the fact that the main set, and I did hear rumours about this a few days ago, but it was only today that we actually got confirmation it was happening. I think that does mean that it's more likely that they're going to try and make this February set as flashy and as awesome as possible. And the way you do that is you put Shiny Star V into it. Now, in terms of what we've had revealed for our May set, it really isn't anything particularly out of the ordinary. We're getting booster packs. Mini portfolios, which is just those binders that you put your cards in. Free pack blisters that will give you the free packs plus the promo and the coin. And an elite trainer box. These are all things we see in every set. They're not particularly new. They're cool. We love them. But it's exactly what we would expect. But in terms of the February mini set, things get a bit more interesting. Now, obviously, we're not listing booster packs here. Booster packs are not being sold because these are special sets and special sets, remember, have their special rules, which is that you can only buy them in special packs. Now, we have got listed mini tins for $8.99, and these have pretty much been established. These are the ones we get a couple of packs and an art card, and there's a bunch of tins, usually five. You put them side by side, they make a picture. Things are nice. There is a $14.99 pin box, which you can expect to be somewhat similar to the pin boxes we saw for Champion's Path. You'll probably get three packs and a pin, and maybe a promo card. We'll have to wait and see. They are light, slightly cheaper, though, so maybe just a pin on those. 
1999 V Special Collection, you can expect to be kind of like the double box. Expect to get a Pokemon V as a promo with alternate artwork or a new Pokemon V, probably alternate artwork, with a jumbo and four packs. The V Tin, again, expect these to be like your regular tins with a bunch of packs and the promo, which again should be a new Pokemon or alternate art. The $40 VMAX Premium Collection, we don't know exactly what that is. It could be kind of similar to the Eternatus VMAX box that we got recently, but it's going to have a promo VMAX in or an alternate art promo. We, we don't actually know, but they're essentially the two options. And then a $50 Elite Trainer Box. And let's say this nice and loudly for those of you at the back. If you want an Elite Trainer Box, pre-order these when they first go up. Because at some point, somebody is going to go, Oh, let's massively scalp these. Especially if and when it's confirmed that the Shiny Charizard V Max is in fact in the set. People are going to go nuts. Pre-order the Elite Trainer Box before the scalpers get a chance. There are many, many places that list it nice and early for RRP or even below. Make sure you pre-order them quickly. If you leave it until we know everything that's in the set, they are going to go nuts like they did for Champion's Path. You have been warned. It is worth pointing out, and I believe I'm right about this. I'm, I'm in the UK, but I'm fairly sure that the RRP for usual Elite Trainer Boxes in the US is $40. This is a $50 Elite Trainer Box, which means it's going to come with a fancy promo like the Charizard that came in the Champion's Path Elite Trainer Box. You have been warned. There we go. So that's what we know, ladies and gentlemen. We've got some products confirmed. We've got confirmation that for the first time in 20 years, we are going to have six months between main sets, which is weird. And then there's a whole bunch of speculation as well. Frankly, I'm excited, but I am a little bit sad because we're going to start seeing really cool cards from Sword and Shield 5 really soon. And we're going to have to wait until May to get them. And that is going to make me sad. But I'd like to know what you think about all of this. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv. Slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.